Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Throwdown. I'm Caleb Black. He's Luke the Big Dog Williams. It's May 16th, 2020. It is time to talk about this week in wrestling history. Every single week we're going to pick a date, the date of the date, and send you back through time to tell you a little bit about what you missed. Maybe you weren't alive yet. Maybe you were asleep. Maybe you were at work. Got a whole lot of stuff to cover. Some of it not as happy as, as we would have liked it to have been. No. But this is what it is. This was our lottery for this week. We're going to talk about Ring of Honor and New Japan's Global Wars Night 2 in 2015. Stacked card. Uh, Matt, the main event alone uh, featured AJ Styles and the Young Bucks against Trent Beretta, Okada, and Rocky Romero yep. in a 17-minute, 25-second match. Uh, I'm sure that was Time well shit spent. to watch. Time well spent. Another technical match that I'm certain stole the show was Shinsuke Nakamura and Roderick Strong. 17 minutes and 5 seconds. That would have been, been a hard hitting. Classic. Yeah, it would have been great. The King of Strong Style and the, and the Man of a 1,007 Holds. Uh, other matches on the card featured Justin uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, Cedric Alexander, and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Christopher Daniels on the card. Moose was on the card. Obviously, would have been a big show was in the Ted Reeve Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada in 2015. Likely. Another big event from this date in wrestling history was WWF No Mercy 1999. Happened in the Manchester Arena in Manchester, England in front of 14,000 people. Plus, main event of that match was a triple threat match. Stone Cold Steve Austin, the reigning and defending WWF heavyweight champion, wrestled The Undertaker and Triple H and won the match to retain his heavyweight championship. Multiple stars. You are talking about the glory days oh, yeah. of the WWF. I think the undercard to the main event was uh, was Shane McMahon as European champion successfully yeah. defending against X-Pac. Nice. Also, so also yeah, uh, you can't go wrong if you want to watch Stone Cold Steve Austin matches. No. There's never going to be another era or climate like there was. And you got to remember, it wasn't just like Everything in the 90s was just had that at music change. It clicked. Sports changed. Yeah. Pro wrestling changed. Boxing changed. And Stone Cold at the helm. It was the, the outside of Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold is the most recognizable name in pro wrestling oh, yeah. history. Most you know, without, you could, you could argue The Rock too because he does the movies. You can. But the Undertaker. The Undertaker, though, is, is not as. There are people who don't watch wrestling who know who Stone Cold is. Well, the thing and with The Rock is, though, is true. most people who, who know who The Rock is know that he wrestled. Right. But they know of him as being an actor. Yeah. And you Stone Cold know. just heralding yeah. that, herald the, the fucking attitude here on his shoulders. Truth. In a match uh, against The Undertaker and Triple H, who, again, are other two most recognizable names in the business. Get this, the opening match to that card, six-man tag, opened it up. It was... The APA as the Acolytes. Sure, that is and Big off. Viscera. Oh, nice! Against Edge, Christian, and Gangrel. Oh, that would have been a. That fuck. was the opener. Yeah. So I mean, you had your open, you had your middle, yeah, you had your close, you had your dark Perfect. gimmick opener. I love Gangrel. I don't care what anybody says about how he worked. No, yeah, I right. Him. You know where he got his name? Gangrel. No. Yeah, it's from a, a board game, kind of like D and D, called Vampire the Masquerade. Gangrel is one of the game, classes yeah. of vampire. Okay. And that's yeah. how he chose his name for the vampire. Huh. Did not know that. Yeah, now you do. Educating people all over. That's going to wrap us up for the events that we were talking about specifically, but we do have some other news on this date. In this date in 1990, the Rock and Roll Express, Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton, defeated Ronnie Garvin and Barry Windham for the vacated NWA U.S. Tag Team Heavyweight Championship. Shout out to producer Mad Max for that. But if you don't know who Ricky Morton is, then you don't know who the Rock and Roll Express is. Ricky Morton was in his tag team, and they wrestled the Rock and Roll Express forever. Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, no, Ricky was in the Rock and Roll. Yeah, you're thinking of the Midnight Express. Was Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton part of the Rock and Roll Express? thought that was the Midnight. was the Midnight Express. So we have an addendum to make here. It was the Midnight Express. Yes. My point getting to who Ricky Morton is, is that he and his partner, Doug Gibson, wrestled Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton numerous times. Dozens, oh, yeah. hundreds of times in brilliant tag team wrestling matches. Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton as the Rock and Roll is, or as the Midnight are just some of the best heel tag team workers you can get. Bobby, Bobby, you don't get much better. Bobby. Managed by Jim Cornette. Uh, they wrestled fucking Barry Windham and Ronnie Garvin 
who in their own rights... Yeah, individually were Individually fantastic. were incredible. Little, little tag team. Yeah. I want to cut in here just Sure, this is our producer, Max about, Fury. We talked about Gangrel and how he got his name. I had curious and started looking up. A Gangrel is a noun, British dialect, a lanky, loose-jointed person, wandering beggar, vagabond, or vagrant. Yeah. Huh. Well, that would make sense as to why Masquerade would have included it as a name for a, some a type class of vampire. Of empire, yeah. Because that sounds like a... A, a UK version of the vampire in the 1800s yeah. sneaking on the streets. That was our producer, Good catch, Max man. Fury. Good Give it catch. up for him, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Outside Good of catch, the man. Midnight Express taking the NWA tag team titles, TNA rebranded itself as Impact this day in 2014. This day in 2014, <laughs> TNA <laughs> officially died. I loved TNA when it first came to television. It is just such a shadow of its former yeah. self. I feel like this was a bad move, but we could talk about that all day long. A couple of things that also occurred this day in wrestling history. Andy Kaufman did pass away this day in 1987. And, of course, the untimely death of Ashley. Maybe. Maybe. He's actually Tony Clifton. Uh, and then, of course, the untimely death of Ashley Massaro was this day in 2019 of last year. Uh, one year. What a shame. What a shame. Crazy Obviously, she was going through it. She went through a lot of things. Uh Sad, sad to have seen her that happen in that way for her. And such, uh, such a talented person. We do have some other things though. Got some birthdays. Yeah. Alex right. Wright's birthday today. Das Wunderkid, the Godfather. The dance. Hey. The Godfather. Happy birthday to the big man and all of his hoes. And Mickey Knuckles. If you're not familiar with Mickey Knuckles' work, I recommend that you open a fucking book. No, I'm kidding. Uh. Indie talent, farly underrated, also, highly underrated. Also uh, wrestled as Moose Knuckles, Moose Knuckles in, in TNA. TNA. Yep. Uh, one of my personal favorite people, I met her, I, God, when I was 13 years old at a wrestling show forever ago. She is everything that Crazy Mary Dobson wishes she could be. Yep. So happy birthday, Mickey. Happy birthday, Godfather. Happy birthday, Alex. Did we miss anything? You need to let us know. You got something you found on today's date you want to share with us? You know what to do. Like, subscribe. Leave us a comment down below, or send us your thoughts at prowrestlingthrowdown at gmail.com, where we'll read them aloud next week. 